Quantum Mechanical Keyboard Firmware, or QMK for short, is a popular open source keyboard firmware. As of today, QMK supports over 100 different keyboards and it is still growing. Unfortunately, QMK is a tool that is very much focused on people who know how to code. Today I'm going to talk about the QMK Configurator, a new web-based tool that will generate a hex file with your desired key map and you don't even have to write a single line of code. You gotta be kidding me. Stay tuned till after the break to find out more. Welcome back. All links talked about here will be in the description section down below. For this tutorial, I'll be making a key map and hex file for the DZ60 Rev 2.0 USB-C PCB. Depending on when you watch this, functionality of features may have changed. There's still a long long way to go, but improvements are constantly being made to the configurator. Let's begin. The first step is to open up your browser and go to config.qmk.fm. You'll be greeted by a little terminal screen, a blank keyboard, and a whole bunch of key codes. Being familiar with QMK key codes can be handy here. If you're not, you can hover your cursor over a button and a small blurb will appear telling you what it does. For a more thorough description, visit docs.qmk.fm slash keycodes. The second step is to go to the keyboard drop-down box and select the keyboard you want. In my case, it's the DZ60. If you select other keyboards, the resulting keyboard representation may not look very nice. It will most likely just be a series of 1U keys. Check back at a later time and hopefully, your keyboard will be supported. The next step is to pick a layout most suitable for the key map you want to make. For my DZ60 key map, the two shift layout is best. There are three ways to make your key map. Drag and dropping, clicking on the keyboard, and selecting the appropriate key code. And lastly, click an empty spot and type the corresponding key code on your physical keyboard. It's the fastest way in my opinion. When you're done, you can save the key map by pressing export key map for future edits. The saved file is a JSON file only compatible with the QMK configurator. In the interest of time, I've already made my own key map to simply edit. To load a previously created key map, press the import key map button and select the JSON file you have already saved. I have three layers in my key map, and it looks like that they are all there. To make an FN key, you have to use the MO button. Put this where you want and in the text entry section, enter the layer you want to momentarily switch to. In my case, I want this to switch to layer 1, so now every time I hold this key down, layer 1 will be activated. I'll put a second FN key, but this time make it activate layer 2. For my particular 60% layout, I have chosen to have arrows, but still retain the 2.25U left shift. Instead of missing out on the question mark and slash key, I've opted to make my shift key hold for shift and tap for question mark and slash. You can do this by using the key code RSFT underscore T. Drag it where you want, and then dragging the tap key code into the little box that appears once you've finished dragging it. When you're done with your layout, make sure to save it for future edits. Once again, that's done by pressing Export Key Map. To make your hex file, hit the green Compile button, give it some time, and once it's done, the Download Hex button should now be clickable.
press the button to download your hex. You are now ready to use a compatible flashing tool of your choice. I recommend QMK Toolbox to accomplish this. Make sure you check out my tutorial on that. Anyway, if you have any questions about this process, or have recommendations, or just have issues or bugs with the tool, feel free to ask or report them in the comment section down below. The tool is still very much an ongoing project. We are striving to make QMK as accessible to everyone as much as possible. If you are familiar with web development and would like to contribute, the repo is on GitHub under QMK slash QMK configurator. We really could use all the help we can get. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.